Wednesday, French President Emmanuel Macron hosted an international conference for the one-year anniversary of Beirut's port explosion. The commemoration comes shortly after the unexpected resignation of the Lebanese Prime Minister Saad Hariri, who is at odds with President Michel Aoun on the formation of a new cabinet. Because Paris desires a reform-minded administration in Beirut, it is prepared to impose diplomatic bans on the ruling elite responsible for delaying the government formation. Paris will also move against groups which pose a challenge to the sectarian balance within the framework of Lebanon's power-sharing agreement. Expect the EU to impose sanctions on politicians that have close links to the Iranian-backed Hezbollah militia. While foreign aid will slightly improve the Lebanese public's economic situation, the sectarian tension in Lebanon is highly unlikely to lessen due to Iran's constant outside intervention. Tehran will attempt to strengthen its foothold in the country through Hezbollah, making a long-lasting reconciliation among the sects difficult. Following extensive repairs, India's border roads organization rendered the Yarlung Lamang Road in Arunachal Pradesh fully accessible earlier this week. The road is of particular strategic importance to the Indian government as it leads to the Lamang Outpost, India's most easterly military outpost along the India-China border. The Yarlung Lamang Road was completed in 2017 during phase one of the India-China Border Roads project. The project aims to expand access to remote regions in order to boost military infrastructure and soldier presence along the contested border. Security concerns along the border garnered fresh attention following a deadly 2020 clash in the Galwan Valley. Both nations are reportedly moving thousands of additional troops to various border regions in response to the latest skirmish. Such events highlight a foreign policy trend in which India uses border infrastructure to counter an increasingly assertive China. However, on Tuesday, in a move to de-escalate tensions, China and India both agreed to pull troops from the Galwan Valley area, where 20 Indian and four Chinese troops were killed in a border clash in June of last year. The agreement arose after the 12th round of negotiations between the two regional superpowers. Although the two nations agreed on the creation of a demilitarized zone, tensions could still flare up again as the other sections of the border remain heavily militarized. On Thursday, Bangladesh held mass vaccination clinics in rural unions to address the spike in nationwide infections. Dhaka aims to vaccinate 300 people at each of its vaccination centers, totaling roughly 4 million doses administered. With over 200 deaths per day and tens of thousands of new cases in the past two weeks, Bangladesh is currently facing its deadliest battle with the pandemic yet. However, as cases have surged across the country, the global economic recovery has endured, causing a sharp rise in the demand for ready-made garments, or RMGs, in Western markets. RMGs make up 81% of Bangladesh's exports and 20% of its GDP. Thus, hoping to revitalize its economy, Bangladesh's RMG factories have been given exclusive permission to reopen despite an inoculation rate of only 2.7%. With restrictions on businesses and public transportation set to expire on August 10th, expect these to be extended while COVID-19 cases surge within the RMG industry, which will nevertheless remain exempt. As a result, it is likely that laborers will rush to join the RMG industry, adding fuel to the fire of rising infections. This will reduce the price of Bangladesh's RMGs in international markets, benefiting Dhaka's economy, but at a gruesome cost considering last week's mass vaccination efforts are only projected to meet half the original goal of 10 million citizens.